this is amazing. Now we are going to see about DSPY. This is going to be the future of frag applications. DSPY is created by Stanford NLP University. It is programming foundation models, but not prompting, which means the prompting is automatically taken care of. In this, we are going to see why we need DSPY, what are the advantages, how it's making our work much more simpler in regards to RAG application. Next, how to configure DSPY, how to load data, create a chatbot that is question and answering system. Again, a chatbot with chain of thoughts. Chain of thoughts is inbuilt in this DSPY. Next, create a RAG in DSPY and finally evaluate. So here is one example. So here is a question. How many stories are in the castle that David Gregory inherited? So in this, there are two parts. One is to understand how many stories are in the castle. Next is to identify the name of the castle, which David Gregory inherited. So this involves reasoning skill. So DSPY is built with reasoning. So here you can see the reasoning is let's think step by step in order to produce the query. We know that David Gregory inherited Kinnady Castle in 1664. To find how many stories in the castle, we need to search for the information about the castle's architectural details. So again, it's running another query in regards to finding the architectural details. After running the query, it gets enough context in regards to the architecture. Then based on this, here is the reasoning. And finally, it found the answer. In similar way, you are able to run complex RAG application, but this DSPY can help you automatically reason, automatically optimize the prompts to get more accurate answer. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about DSPY. So what are the advantages of DSPY? When you take a RAG application, when you ingest the data, the data get automatically chunked into smaller bits, then converted to embeddings and stored in the vector database. In the step number two, when the user asks a question, then the relevant information is retrieved and then sent to the large language model as context to generate the final response. So the area where the issue happens mainly in the retrieval step, considering we have already optimized the ingestion pipeline. So what issue could happen during retrieving the relevant context? Inadequate retrieval coverage, retrieval of irrelevant information, bias in retrieval content. We are able to fix this individually, but it's going to be more tedious. And also it varies with each and every data type and context. Similarly, the second area that issue could happen is when the large language model generate response. So the response could be of lack of context and relevance, inconsistency and incoherence, poor quality and inaccuracy, inability to adapt to context changes. So how can we fix these all issues? If we do it manually, it's going to take a lot of time. And when you change your system or large language model, then again, you need to change it. So why DSPY? It can automatically optimize your prompts, auto reasoning built in, it adapts to the pipeline, it has auto weight optimization and evaluation built in. So before going into detail, I want to show you three important components in DSPY. The first one is signature, next one is modules, and third one is optimizer. The signature is more focused on the type of system we are building. So in this case, it's question and answer. Sometimes it could be content and summary of the content. Signature basically input and output, such as question, answer, document and summary, sentence, sentiment, context, question, and then getting an answer that is a rag question answering, then question choices with reasoning and selection as output. So this is called signature. Next, modules. Module involves two things. One is the prompting technique and the large language model. And the third one is optimizer. So in DSPY, there is automatic system which can automatically evaluate the generated response and the retrieved context and evaluate against the ground truth. Then it will modify the prompts and the weights to get much accurate answer. So this is how the whole thing works. The user is asking a question, then based on that, we are providing the context and question to the large language model to get an answer. 
So this signature will predefine how the whole system will look like, but the actual process will be happening here. So here is where it gets the context and the user's question. And finally, the large language model is going to generate the answer. This can then be fed into the optimizer to optimize the LM weights instructions or demonstration of the input and output behavior. I'm going to take you through step by step on how to implement this in code by creating a RAG application. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. First, pip install dspy-ai, then open AI and then reach to install all the required packages. DSPY AI is the main package. Open AI is to use a large language model and rich is optional, which is used to print clearly and click enter. Now it's installing the packages. Next, export your open AI API key like this and then click enter. Now let's create a file called app.py and let's open it. Inside the file, import sys, os, DSPY, hot pot QA dataset, bootstrap few shot evaluate, deduplicate, and print from rich. So these are the steps which we are going to do. First, we are going to configure and load data. Then we are going to create a basic chatbot that is question and answering system. Then going to see how it compares when we add a chain of thoughts module. Then we are going to see how we can implement RAG and finally compare the performance of all of these. First, configuration and data loading. So we are mentioning the model name, which I'm going to use GPT 3.5 Turbo then setting the callbird v2 function, adding those things to the settings. Now we are importing the database and we are going to use hotpot QA. Here is the hotpot QA dataset in Hugging Face. It contains question, answer, supporting facts and context. So using this information, we are going to create a question and answering system. So here we're getting 20 data for training and 50 for development set or validation set. Using this, we can modify the metrics or optimize the weights or prompts and train the whole system. Next, we are getting the train set and dev set, just printing the length for our reference and printing the train set data and dev set data. This is just for our reference. Now we are going to print the example question with answer. Taking an example, printing the question, printing the answer, and relevant Wikipedia title. Now we are going to see how this data set is going to look like when we print, and we got one example here. Now I'm going to run this code. In your terminal, Python app.py, and then click enter. And here is the response. So you can see the data contains a question, answer, and goal titles. So here is an example question. What is the nationality of the chef? Answer is English, and the relevant Wikipedia titles, restaurant impossible, Robert Irwin. So this is the actual question and answer. Next, we are going to create a chatbot that is a basic question and answering system and check if it's answering the question correctly. So step number two, basic chatbot. Here we're creating a function called basic QA and this is where we are implementing the signature, dspy.signature. Answer questions with short factoid answers. So the whole system is one question, and one answer. The answer should be between one to five words. That's it. Now we have defined the signature, which clearly defines what we want to do, which is to create a chatbot, question and answering chatbot. Next, generating the response by using dspy.predict and passing the basic QA class, then calling the generate answer function and passing the example question, which we have already created here. So we are passing this question and going to test if we are getting the correct answer. Next, we are going to print the output. That's it. Now we have created the chatbot or question answering system, and we are going to test if it is going to respond correctly. Now I'm going to run this code. In your terminal, Python app.py and then click enter. And here is the response. So previously, we know the answer should be English, but when asked the question, what is the nationality of the chef featured in restaurant impossible? And here the predictor answer is American but it should be English or British. So the answer is wrong. Now we need to fix this. So let's introduce chain of thought as you can see in this image. So in your code, third step is to create a chatbot with chain of thoughts. If you don't know about chain of thought prompting, it's good to read this paper and this improves the quality of the response, which means 
it's a series of intermediate reasoning steps which significantly improves the ability of large language models to perform complex reasoning. So that's exactly what we're going to implement using modules. So coming to the code, we are printing for our reference and then calling the dspy.chainofthought function and passing the basic QA signature which we already created before. That's it. And now we are going to call the function as before and pass the question, then print the answer. That's it. Now I'm going to run this code, pythonapp.py, and here is a response. So previously, we got the response as American, but the answer should be English or British. Then using chain of thought prompting, the predictor answer is British. That is correct. See, by just adding this one function, chain of thought, which is in a module, you are able to get better answer. To see what's happening behind the scenes, I added turbo.inspect history, n equals one. Now, after running the code, you can see the reasoning behind how we got the correct answer. So here the reasoning template is, let's think step by step in order to produce the answer. And this is automatic. Now, fourth step, let's create a rag to improve this further, which means we are able to provide context, chain of thought together. So printing for our reference. So in DSPY rag, first we are going to create signature, then create a module, then set up optimizer to optimize that, and finally execute the rag. So in the rag process, first signature. So we are going to create a class called generate answer, and you can see its signature. In a rag application, generally you have context, question, and then answer. So we are predefining what the whole rag is all about. So that is the purpose of signature. So next step, we are going to create module. It is also called pipeline. In this, we are going to create a class called rag and it is a module. So this looks like PyTorch. In the init function, we are providing the model definition and in the forward function, we are doing the module iteration. So here in the init, we have retrieve and generate answer. Same as you see here, retrieve and generate answer are the main two areas the rag is focused on. And in the generate answer, we use chain of thought. Next in the forward function, we are providing the context and the prediction that is a generating answer. So based on the question from the user, we are retrieving relevant passages as context and passing that context to the large language model to generate answer. So as you can see in this image, the user is asking a question and that question is used to search the database and relevant information is retrieved as context. And that context is sent to the large language model to generate the response. That's exactly what's happening here. Retrieving the context, generating the response and returning it. Now we have completed creating the module. Next is creating the optimizer or optimizing the pipeline. In this, we are creating a function called validate context and answer. This is the metrics to optimize against. So here we are checking if the answer is matching the correct answer. Next, teleprompter. And this is the main function, bootstrap few shot, which is the optimizer and passing the metrics. Next, we are compiling using teleprompter.compile and providing the rag, that is a rag class, and then the training set. That's it, we have completed optimizer. Next, final, executing the pipeline. Compile the rag function and passing the question and finally printing the answer, that's it. So as a quick summary in regards to rag, first we created the signature, next we created the module, third we created the optimizer and compiled it. Finally, we are asking the same question again to the rag application and printing out the results. Now I'm going to run this code. Python app and then click enter. And here is the answer for the rag application. So the question we are asking here is, what castle did David Gregory inherit? And here is the predicted answer based on the context. To see what reasoning behind this, I'm going to add turbo inspect history n equals one. And let's run this. And here is the reasoning behind that. What castle did David Gregory inherit? And here is the reasoning. Let's think step by step in order to produce the answer. And then it used this context and got the answer. Now the final step is to evaluate. In this, we are going to see how to evaluate the basic rag, evaluate uncompiled Boolean rag, and compiled Boolean rag. Uncompiled means without optimizer, compiled means with optimizer. And finally, we are going to compare this course. Coming to the coding, printing for a reference, basic rag. Next, we are creating a function called 
gold passages retrieved. Same as before, this is the matrix is to check if the generated response is the expected answer. To evaluate, we are going to use evaluate function, pass the dev set, next call the function evaluate on hot pot QA and provide the compiled rag, which is the one which we compiled earlier. That is the basic rag application and providing the metrics. This is the metric. Now the score for basic rag is done. Now let's go to uncompiled Bailin rag without optimizer. Creating the signature. In this, we are modifying the signature slightly. It contains context question and query. So the task is to write a simple search query that will help answer a complex question. Next, we need to create the module. So here is a simplified Bailin module. The only difference from previous thing is that we have max hops. The main purpose of Bailin is it will automatically modify the question or the query and divide that into chunks. Questions like this will have two chunks. For example, how many stories are in the castle that David Grigori inherit? So the first chunk is how many stories are in the castle? That's the first question. And the second question, what is the name of David Grigori's inherited castle? By having both the information, we'll get the accurate answer. So that is when this Bailin rag is powerful. So based on the question, it's going to automatically create two queries, retrieve the relevant passages or context, and then save it in context variable. In this way, this system is able to divide a large question into small different bits and then be able to answer the questions more accurately by pulling up more relevant context information. Next, uncompiled Bailin with zero shot. Now we are going to predict and finally printing the answer. Question, predicted answer, and context. That's it. Now we have completed uncompiled Bailin rag without optimizer. Final, final step is to add optimizer to this. Compile Bailin rag with optimizer. Same as before, we are creating a validate context and answer and hops function. This is the metric to optimize. Now calling the bootstrap few shot function as before, passing the metrics, that is a function name as here. So in this metric, we are checking if for each hop, if the answer is what is expected. Next, compiling the optimizer as before, getting the uncompiled Bailin retrieval score by evaluating, getting the compiled Bailin retrieval score by evaluating, and finally printing all the scores for comparison. Now, finally, if you want to test, we can call the compiled Bailin function and then ask a question like this. How many stories are in the castle that David Grigori inherited? That's it. So in this evaluation, we are comparing the score of basic rag, uncompiled Bailin rag, and then compile Bailin rag with optimizer. Now going to run this code, Python app.py, and here is the response. With the basic rag, it is 26. With uncompiled Bailin, with hops, more advanced reasoning, it is 48. With compiled Bailin, that is with optimizer, it's 58. So by using the compiled Bailin, method, we are able to get more accurate answer compared to the basic RAG application. The compiled Bailin is going to divide the question into multiple small queries and then retrieve the context and give you a more accurate answer. I'm really excited about this. This is going to be the advanced level of RAG application. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this. So stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.